I'm the Head of Languages at the Hills Grammar School and in that role I look after the other language teachers and I make sure that the department runs smoothly with all the language courses but I'm also a Japanese teacher and I teach students from years 7 to 12 and I run tours every uh, two years to Japan and we host Japanese uh, schools and students in, um, in our school as well. To tell you the truth, I wasn't really determined to teach whilst I was um, studying. I wasn't quite you know, sure what I wanted to do. Um, but in my fourth year at Macquarie University, I had two very inspirational language methodology uh, teachers. And when I watched them teach and interacted with them, I thought, mm, maybe, maybe this is what I want to do. Well, my parents are Italian, so I grew up in an Italian household and spoke Italian at home. So I've always loved learning languages and um, learning about other cultures. So I studied French in high school and then when I um, went to university I thought I'd like to do another language. And during those years it was very popular to study Japanese because there were so many Japanese tourists coming to Australia. So I thought I would like to get a job in tourism, working in a hotel or being a tour guide, but I also thought that maybe I, I couldn't get a job doing that depending on how good my Japanese was. So I thought, oh, maybe I should um, do a dip ed as well just to give myself another avenue for, for secure work. So because I spoke Italian and French and I grew up with Italian parents, I was quite, I think I was quite broad-minded, but learning Japanese gave me an insight into Asian culture. And then when I was living in Japan, I was living in a very tiny village in Fukushima uh, prefecture called Furudono Machi. And not many people spoke English there, which was great for my Japanese, but the better I got at Japanese and the more I lived in Japan and, and communicated with Japanese people really gave me an insight into the way they think and their cultures and customs. So had I gone to Japan and only spoke English to them, I would not have the in-depth knowledge that I think I have today about Japanese people and Japanese culture, which I love so much. So after I lived in Japan, I came back to, to Sydney and started teaching Japanese. And after a few years, I just felt that I needed a little bit of a break from teaching. So I applied for a job with um, the Department of Trade and Foreign Affairs. And I was employed as an attendant at the World Expo in 2005, which was in Nagoya. So I definitely used my Japanese to talk to Japanese people about Australia. And then I came back to the Hills Grammar School and continued my teaching career. But then two years after that, I thought, oh, maybe I'd like to take another break. And I was fortunate enough that the school allowed me to, to take leave. So I was a, a flight attendant for Jetstar for a year. So I used my Japanese schools there to serve customers, Japanese customers, and, um, and make announcements for the airline. So there's three different professions where I've, I've used my Japanese. So I think it was such a good decision for me. I actually think it's essential for young Australians to learn another language. It's very narrow-minded to think that because we live in Australia, we only have to speak English because you would want to be able to help people who have moved to Australia who can't speak English yet. I also think learning a language develops certain values in people, like uh, acceptance of other cultures and other people, and respect for people and other cultures. So there are those personal skills and values, but also um, from a cognitive aspect, I think there are many benefits from learning another language because you actually learn more about your own language 
and I, I think that you become a better communicator when you speak more than one language. When I reflect on what I try to do, I think you have to be an excellent communicator. I think you have to be very flexible. I think you have to have a, a good knowledge of IT skills these days and I think you need to be able to work in a team which is very important because you need to share ideas and resources and, and have a, a common goal so that you all understand what that is and you're all working towards that, that goal. I found Japanese very difficult when I was at university but the staff encouraged me to keep going and it completely changed my life. So for students studying Japanese, you just have to keep trying and persist with it and work hard. And for your future profession and your future job, your future work, I, I feel very uh, lucky and blessed to be able to combine what I love to do with my profession and my career. You know, I love to travel and I can do that with my students and I love to teach about Japan and Japanese culture and the Japanese language and I can do that. And I think the students can feel that I, I love to do that, so I think it inspires them. And it's very inspiring for me to keep in touch with my ex-students and so many of them have gone on to um, live in Japan and work in Japan and have careers using Japanese themselves. So um, I think it's really important to make sure that your work is combined with your hobbies and your passions and that you do what you love.